As of July 7th, Forbes has an article here, $2,000 a day fine for obstructing coronavirus contact tracing. So, buckle up your seatbelts, folks, huh? <clears throat> In Rockland County, they recently got aggressive about contact tracing, issuing subpoenas to eight partygoers who refused to cooperate with tracking efforts. And if they did not comply, they would be subject to fines of $2,000 per day. However, within 24 hours, all eight acquiesced. So, it looks like the threat of money means that people will just do what they have to do, right? So, there was a 100-person gathering in Rockland County, even though they have, through the state ordinance, capped gatherers at 10 people. After the party's host and eight guests tasted, tested positive, Rockland officials launched a vigorous contact tracing effort to identify those who might have been exposed. So, the people were hanging up, denying they were there, even though their names had been given by a different party attendee. Instead of tolerating these party-goers' selfish refusal to cooperate, Rockland County upped the ante, issuing the subpoenas. The subpoena and financial warning worked as all eight individuals who had received a subpoena started to cooperate with the health department. I will not allow the health of our country to be compromised because of ignorance, stupidity, and obstinance, or anything else, said Rockland County Executive. Amazing, right? Amazing. The contact tracing is one of the few tools that public health officials have in their arsenal to fight coronavirus outbreaks until the vaccine is safely developed. A role of government is to protect individuals and their families as well as healthcare workers and essential workers. Wow. The hard skilled work of contact tracing is akin to hurricane warnings. People are alerted if they ran if I'm sorry, if they can protect themselves and their families, and we need, sorry, my uh, voiceover thing is right in the way, and we play the hand we are dealt, and we could possibly save lives and reduce the spread to restore our economy. Sadly, New York City and other places that have embraced contact tracing have struggled with its execution, with less than half city residents testing positive or presumed positive provided information to contact tracers. In Massachusetts, only 60% responding. In Louisiana, fewer than 50% were answering. Gee, I wonder why. Who wants to deal with these people? You really want to snitch on every single person? But where was this when protests were happening, right? Isn't that what you want to know? When all those protests were happening and there were gatherings of more than 10 people and more than 100 people and even more than 1,000 people at a time? But... No, coronavirus wasn't spiking then, right? Because riots and protesting is safe and is for people who are oppressed and therefore you cannot ask them if they went to a protest or a riot and you can't do anything. So, but now, now plebs, even though before, when everyone was scared before the riots and protesting, some people were like, yeah, we should do contact tracing. <laughs> uh-huh. um, now, after the rot- protests and riots, and you saw on the news how they were acting, you're really going to be like, hmm, yeah, let's, let's get in line with this, right? Okay, so individual rights have limits. They have limits. Just like one cannot yell fire in a crowded movie theater, and one's right to punch, throw a punch ends where another person's nose begins, we need to rethink the balance of individual rights and community obligation. If individuals aren't willing to take rationale and basic steps to mitigate the spread, the government must mandate action and ramp up enforcement. So in conclusion, Rockland County's subpoena and threat of a $2,000 fine worked well, and the rest of the country should adopt equal measures because American lives depend on it. Amazing. Watch this. This report is based on Amazing Polly's recent video, Is This Torture? In her video, Polly examines Amnesty International's 1973 report on torture and how it seems to reflect the current response to COVID-19. According to Amnesty International's report, 
Torture is the systematic and deliberate infliction of acute pain in any form by one person on another in order to accomplish the purpose of the former against the will of the latter. The report then uses Biederman's chart of coercion to describe the technique. Psychologist Albert Biederman studied communist Chinese tactics known as DDD, debility, dependency, and dread. The CIA has been trained to use debility, dependency, and dread. And according to their 1983 Human Resource Exploitation Training Manual, many psychologists consider the threat of inducing debility to be more effective than debility itself. With DDD, the debilitated victim becomes dependent upon the torturer and develops a strong fear of anything vague or unknown. Biederman's chart of coercion lays out the design of DDD. Does any of this sound familiar? Number one, isolation. We see this with quarantines and social distancing and the prohibition of crowds and large gatherings. Number two, monopolization of perception. Corporate mainstream media has monopolized all of pop culture and those on social media who challenge the mainstream narrative are censored. Also listed is restricted movement and monotonous food. Number three, induced debilitation and exhaustion. Gym closures, church closures, losing your job, school closings, and wearing masks all day long increase stress and provokes exhaustion and debilitation. Number four, threats. We are threatened that our own children may be taken away from our homes and that experimental forced vaccines are coming. We are told that more will die if we restart America. And we are threatened with tracking chips, contact tracing, and a new normal. Number five, occasional indulgences. Here we find fluctuations of interrogators' attitudes, such as BLM protests are good, Trump rallies are bad. Walmart is okay, but small businesses are not. The torturer will provide occasional indulgences such as rewards for partial compliance. If you just wear a mask, someday we can return to normal. Number six, demonstrating omnipotence and omniscience. Shutting down the entire global economy was a pretty good demonstration of omnipotence. Huge fines and jail for people not wearing a mask. We see the omniscience with Anthony Fauci, Bill Gates, and other official experts. Number seven is degradation, being called non-essential or a science denier, being treated as ignorant fools and called names by celebrities for not complying. Number eight, enforcing trivial demands. This final step develops habits of compliance, enforcement of minute rules, such as standing six feet apart following arrows and showing support for violent BLM protests. Also, according to the report on torture, many victims become ill as a result of coercion, and more than half the illnesses listed in the report can be easily diagnosed as COVID-19 according to CDC guidelines. Do you really think that this is all a coincidence? Or are the people of the world being subjected to an advanced form of torture, coercion, and mind control? For InfoWars.com, this is Greg.